Hello there and welcome to your favorite all women talk show, Sister Sister, on 97.3 City FM and City TV. Of course, we're live on Sub-Saharan, well, in Sub-Saharan Africa on DSTV Channel 363. You can catch us on GoTV Channel 182 as well. Now, the show is brought to you by Vodafone. Together we can. Onga, Mama's Helping Hand, delicious tasting. Talia Rice, always coming home to love. Kel White. Happy Smile and Geisha, Geisha, African Strength. Now on today's episode, as usual, we're going to be jumping into some relationship issues which have been brought before us. We share our opinions and leave you to decide. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, I'll tell you exactly how you can be part of this show. Plus, we get to meet my sisters in studio as well. Thanks for joining us once again. Welcome to Sister Sister. And you're welcome back to Sister Sister on City TV and City FM. Okay, so today there are various ways that you can reach us on the show. In fact, they haven't changed if you're a regular viewer or listener. Essentially, all you need to do is to send us a quick WhatsApp to 054-998-6996. Alternatively, you can send an email to jessica at cityfmonline.com or just find us on Facebook at Sister Sister. L-I-V-E, Sister Sister Live, like our page, join the exciting conversations that happen on our wall, or just send us a DM if you'd like your message to be read on the show. Official hashtag for the show is Sister Sister Live as well. A few of you have been asking, so there you have it. Just tweet at us with that, and uh, yes, we get to, you know, figure it out as well, or see your message as well. Okay, so now that we know how to contribute, be part of the conversation, let me say hello to my sisters in and out of the studio. Um, in studio, we have Olivia on my right and Sandria on my left. Looking so colorful. I didn't get the memos, not fair. <laughs> I'm jealous. How are you doing? We're good. Yeah. Good, thank you. Good, good, good. What's new? Oh, I've been praying about something for so long and finally God answered my prayer. Oh, yay. So, Hallelujah. Awesome. So yeah, I That's have a great. testimony. So those are people out there who don't believe God answers prayers. He actually does. Okay. So I'm that. happy about All that. All right. Super stuff. <laughs> Drea? I did. What's popping? I did. I can see. <laughs> Going to Egypt, Ancient. Ancient. Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The yes. mummy. She's been yes. dreaming about Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even know what that's and, and about. And living different lives. Oh, you a mummy in the life you are living? <laughs> Like I'm sure I, I wasn't even human, but today. Right. Mm -hmm. We shall talk about we that shall later. We talk about it. Mm -hmm. Very important. We have Claudia joining us from Berlin. What's going on, Claudia? Life, 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 life. A bit boring, but yeah, enjoying the sun and the little summer that we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. Great. Well, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll go right into our first message for today. It says, hello, ladies. I trust this letter finds you well. I am a well-to-do businessman, and I've been married for a little over a year. I listened to the story that was shared on this platform last week about a lady who was paying someone 100 Ghana CDs per head. I don't know if I should be ashamed of my situation, but I would like to seek your honest opinion. I've always been blown away by anal sex. My experience with my ex-girlfriend was epic. I know it isn't very, isn't, it isn't every woman that is comfy with this mode of sexual intercourse, but I was hopeful my wife will eventually warm up to the idea. I mentioned this fantasy to her only after we got married. She was really disgusted by the thought of it, and it has dampened my spirit. I never thought to broach the subject again because of her reaction. Three months down the line, she offered to let me have my way only if I was willing to gift her $200 per session. I was elated at the idea because that's chicken change to me. I never thought of this action in a negative light because I was getting what I wanted. After listening to last week's episode, all the negative comments that came after, I also chanced on that particular story on the Sister Sister Facebook page where a lot of people referred to the lady as very cheap. I feel terrible now because it seems like what I've been doing is no different from paying a sex worker. Am I being too hard on myself? Should I speak to my wife about coming to an agreement that does not necessarily seem like a business transaction? Ladies, 
please help. Drea. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh. I, caught, I caught your reaction in the corner of my eye. That's why I came to you first. What are you thinking? So I'm thinking, hmm. No, I don't think you're being too hard on yourself. Okay? Because, one, she's your wife. Two, she's the one who offered to be paid for it. Three, there are people who actually fantasize. You know, there are all sorts of fantasies. So his fantasy may be anal. There are people who fantasize about being sexual workers, right? Mm. So she could be playing out her fantasy as well. <sighs> if she's enjoying getting paid for something that you're enjoying doing, the two of you are a couple, you're married, you're allowed to do anything that is comfortable for the two of you in the privacy of your bedroom. Do you get what I mean? So I don't think he's being too hard on himself. Yes, he, he went onto the sister sister page and yes, he heard all of the negative comments and all of that and all of that. But I think the minute there's a marriage and the two of you have agreed, the rest of us can go and sleep. Oh. Like, what the two of you are doing in the confines of your bedroom, once you're getting your anal and you're happy, once she's getting a $200 and she's happy, Charlie, there's peace at home. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> Why do you look surprised? Like, oh, I wish I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> you have that look on your face. Like, what's that about? Because uh, this is a tough one. Mm. Um, this is a, a really tough one because um, <laughs> as much as the, the Bible doesn't categorically say anything regarding anal sex, it also states, um, I think in First Romans 26 to 27 thereabout, it talks about having a natural sex. So there's natural and there's unnatural sex in the Bible. So what does God deem as natural sex and unnatural sex? Why was sex even created in the beginning? It was, it's meant to be enjoyed and primarily for procreation. So the fact that you, you've been so crazy about having anal sex for the longest time. You married her. I don't think that was a conversation you guys had even before you, you got married. After. Yeah, after. So he it was after. after. Yeah. Yeah. So he you sprang the surprise on her. She <laughs> never thought that this, she never saw this coming. And you know when you love somebody, you want to give them your all. You want them to be happy and all of that. So this this could have come about, you've asked once, you've asked twice, the first time she was disgusted, but you keep, and she's like, she probably listened to a couple of friends who are like, okay, if you might as well do it, then take money for, for, for it. Right. I don't condone it, I don't agree with it, and I don't think it should have happened, and I don't think she should have done that. I mean, at no point in time should any wife be charging their husband for sex in the bedroom. I mean, you, you can't do that. Like, I, I don't see why, like, you didn't agree to those terms the day that you guys said, I do. That's my honest opinion. Right. Like, you shouldn't be charging your husband for any kind of sex in the bedroom. Mm. And once it goes past the fact that, um, once it goes past the idea of it being more of a chore, more of, I'm just giving it to you because I have no choice. I might as well take money from it. At which point in time do you describe it as love making? What is, it's supposed to be, um, a sexual bonding moment where both souls come together. You express yourself through love. But all of this isn't happening. And not to even talk about the side effects of anal sex. There, there, are, are? there are side okay. effects of anal sex, however you want to look at it, both short term and long, long term. You could have people tell you you can lubricate all you want long, day, noon, and night. But there are side effects, such as... You can have leakages. Is that a myth? The way Drea is laughing. You can have, you can have leakage in your butthole. Um, after a while, what could happen is your intestines can start dropping. Literally. At least from research that I've done. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, hemorrhoids. You can start having those 
you know, if you don't know what hemorrhoids are, it's cocoa. You can start. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, not to talk about STDs, STIs, and all of that. Like, listen. However, me, I don't, I don't, whatever. The, 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 the vagina was created in a way that can contract and can open up. The anus was not meant for that. The anus, and the reason why you enjoy it beca is because it's tighter. And clearly, when you want to, you know, go in and out, you will enjoy it because it's not, it's not, the feeling is not the same as vaginal sex. So the question is, every time you make love with your wife or to your wife, do you actually enjoy it? And the fact that you've been giving her pressure over a long period of time and she's succumbed, does it make it right? Mm. If you feel like in your conscience you shouldn't be doing that and your wife should not be charging you for this kind of thing, don't be having this kind of sex. Okay, don't be. And I know also that the Bible also talks about, like, once you start having anal sex, you open up your soul and your spirit to all kinds of demons and stuff. It's in the Bible. Refer to it. So it's either you're doing what is right or what is, or, 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 or what is wrong. And clearly, this is not sitting well with you. And I'm so happy that this show is used as a platform to, to, um, to educate and to, um, to sort of um, highlight, some of, these highlight some, some of these crucial conversations. Because it's like, bam, an eye opener to you based on last week's um, um, show that we mm. did. Yeah. Okay, so once it doesn't sit well with you and you're thinking about it, it means that, Charlie, I don't think that you should be paying your wife for sex like that. And I don't think that you should be having anal sex. And think about your wife and think about what the long-term effects are actually going to be on her. Especially if you're looking to have children. Um, Charlie, you now, nah, you sitting there, when you constipate and then the thing has to come out of your bum, how does it feel? It comes. It's painful, but it's comes. It's painful, exactly. But die. why should that experience be painful? So for some other person that you love, why do you want to do that same thing that you don't want to be done to you on some other person, and especially your wife? So if you don't want anything going up your bum, don't expect somebody else you love to take it in easily. She's mm. compromising for you. And, and I know of stories whereby women have been pushed to the wall just to have anal sex in order to have their, their children's fees paid. Like, until when? So I don't think you should be doing that. Please okay. stop it. That's my opinion. All right. Um, Claudia, let me bring Claudia in. Let's hear your opinion on this one. What do you think? Um, I think the subject of discussion is not the whether anal sex is appropriate or not. Here is a woman who is exercising her agency. She offered her husband three months down the line. So I'm not gonna believe that she was squares. She sat, decided, you know what? This is what I want to do. And she's exercising her agency. And for the man, his problem is not the anal sex. It is the money being charged for anal sex. It is because people came on a show and I didn't listen. So I can't really speak to what, what happened or, uh, on that issue, but he feels being charged money for sex with a partner comes with a lot of stigma. The person thinks he's cheap. So that is where his problem is not exactly the act. So I'm not going to dwell on the act and the right or wrong of it. I am just happy that the woman has sat down and decided, you know what, my husband and I are going to enjoy ourselves. And in exchange, I offered to take 200 um, euros. He's, he's happy with it. He's decided to pay. Two people are happy. They should do them. If they are happy, they should go with it. And it's always funny when it comes to sex and money and transaction. Every sexual act is transactional. I mean, people act like they are saints, but people are having sex just to get married. That's transactional in yes. itself. You are, you are having sex in exchange for something. Yes. So why do we stigmatize it as dirty, horse, prostitute when people charge money? <laughs> people are having sex for all sorts of reasons. But the moment economic decisions come into the equation, we all act like we are saints and... You know, people are having sex with men for bags. Men are having sex because people have sex for all sorts of reasons. So I'm not going to dwell on the, whether it's appropriate or not. Are they happy as a couple? The woman exercised her agency. He exercised his agency. They are happy. That's it. Whatever you do in society, people are going to talk about you. People are going to judge you. So they have to sit and decide their long-term interest. 
if they are happy, they should do them. That's my two cents. Mm. Interesting. Drea, you've been meaning to talk for a while. <laughs> and I've been putting a gag on you, but yeah, finally, okay, go ahead. So, so I just wanted to address a few things that Olivia had mentioned. Um, the Bible talking about unnatural sex. Mm. Um, carnal knowledge, actually. Unnatural carnal knowledge. Mm. Doggy is unnatural carnal knowledge. In actual fact, biblically, sex missionary. is mix missionary for procreation, not for enjoyment. So the minute you said enjoyment, you had, you had moved from the Bible. Sex in the Bible is for us to have children. That's the first thing. My second thing is really, if I cannot exercise my fantasies with the person that I have stood in front of the church and the world to say I love and I want to be with, who else can I exercise these fantasies with? Should he step out like the lady in last week's to find somebody and pay to get anal sex? Last week I said the same thing. If you haven't tasted jollof before, you never crave jollof. This man enjoys his anal. He has found a wife who has thought about it three months down the line. It's, and he didn't say, I pestered her. Natural fact, he said it threw him off. Mm. So he left. She came back. And offered. And offered. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. She came back and said, you know what? Okay, this will please you. Me too. $200 will please me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just confused. Hold on. Wait, wait, hang on. That, like from this story, I'm not sure. So is it the guy who's getting anal? Or is it the woman? No, it's the getting woman. Anal? The oh, woman. He's giving the woman. He's giving the woman. He's giving the woman anal. Right. And she, she has three months. Mm. It's not like he came to push it and say, give me, give me, give me, and then she came to he see. He doesn't say that, though. He does, no, he had to but, contemplate okay, no, and actually we don't, we don't know for no, a fact. No. No. So, so I think that we should go with what he has said, because mm. yeah. if, he, if he had insisted. And, and like she was saying, his, his problem is the fact that people came on social media and, and said that, and we're girl. bashing this other girl mm. who's paying for it and said she's cheap. Mm. In her case, I think people would say she's cheap, one, because she's paying for sex. Too, because she's not married to either of them. In fact, she was doing a friend, two friends. Yeah. So yes, that comes mm -hmm. off. That comes off mm -hmm. cheap. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, and I'm glad she mentioned that, there's no sex that's not transactional. If you're having sex so that you will be loved, it is transactional. You're having Trans the sex no. for love. I, I, if you're having sex for someone to buy you credit, it is transactional. Which is, you know, in all I, honesty, these days, the word "ashawu." It's no longer an insult because if Precisely. you think about it, everybody's hoeing. Everybody <laughs> is hoeing. <laughs> you may not be hoeing for money. Mm. It's only because a shower is branded as hoeing for cash. But please, if you're hoeing, if in fact, if you're having sex to get a job, you are hoeing. If you're having sex to please somebody, you are hoeing. The minute the sex is with the intention of, and in fact, you may not necessarily process it as, oh, the more I give this man sex, the more he loves me. You may not process it like that, but you know, in, in your subconscious, you know that, ah, That's gonna every keep time I give him some style, it a check for me even more. Auntie, it cannot be transactional, especially in the confines of marriage. Sex is meant to be enjoyed. It cannot be transactional. Where in the Bible? And when you're... Why, why it, where, it, where, where does it say in the Bible that it's meant to be enjoyed? That's why I said that. Enjoyed. The Bible doesn't categorically mention even the style. So I actually am... I, I, would, I would beg to differ for you saying... missionary. Missionary. But you the do Bible, know that like some, Bible, some, no. some religious no. folk believe yes, that, that, that missionary is, is the way to go. Those are their doctrines. Mm. Okay, but sex in the confines of marriage is okay, not so, transactional. So, so in the you Bible, what is unnatural? In the Bible, what is unnatural? And what is natural? It goes on, the Bible goes on to talk about sodomy. Mm. It talks about what happened in them. Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. So if it was cool with God, why did he, why did he get but rid you of, do realize of Sodom that, and Gomorrah? You do realize that it's the so, same Bible so, that says so, you shouldn't wear mixed, mixed fabrics. Okay, mixed fabrics. Leviticus. Leviticus I need talks to do, about I, mixed, I, I, mixed fabric. But, but it's eating about shellfish. Eating shellfish, wearing eating clothes, wearing jewels. Oh, wearing oh, wearing oh, jewels. Oh, See, oh, my oh, point oh, is oh, once we go no, into no, the no, Bible... No, no, no. When you go into the New Testament, and if we're going to go into New Testament, right, and we're going to go about what to eat and what not to eat, as far as I'm concerned, everything is blessed, and we can eat anything and everything. But when we talk about sex, let, let, let's stay with us, stick to the subjects. Mm -hmm. When we talk about sex in the confines of marriage, I don't think it's... Um, what's the word that they use? Permissible? It's, it's what, not negotiated. What did you guys... It's transactional. Transactional, transactional right. I don't think it's transactional. Mm. Because you love each other. If you guys came together 
the foundation was great. You love each other. Why would you be having transactional sex with your husband? Once it's transactional, it's not right. Mm. It's either so you for you, it's just an exchange of money. That's the problem. Yes, yes. Is it only money, money, money that makes it transactional? And I'm married to you and I'm having sex. What, why? Why can't it be a regular goal. bonding? Okay. Why can't it be a regular bonding, love-making session? So why wait, does it have to so, be okay, transactional? So I have a okay. question, mm -hmm. Olivia. I have a quick question. Last one. So yes, last one. So if she wasn't taking the two hundred euro for it, would you be okay with it? Or the fact that it's staying still, up because it's unnatural? Be okay, okay with it because he's doing something that she doesn't like, and she's that's having the to, reason she's that, charged. She exactly. never said she didn't like it. That's she never said she didn't like it though. Initially, oh, she was gosh. disgusted, but she had three she months taking money for it. Why is she taking money? It's because like, maybe like, it's so too much that no, I have to puke. No, so I might as well take something from it. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. It's possible that it's a fantasy. Let's let's agree to disagree. Yes, okay. Yes, let's yeah. ag agree to disagree. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, viewers, listeners, you can weigh in on this one, okay? Our WhatsApp number is zero five four nine nine eight six nine nine six. How do you feel about it? You know, the whole f idea of anal sex with his wife. And of course, his wife also charging money for it. Let's hear your thoughts, okay? All right, um, we'll go into our next message. <laughs> yeah, we'll go into our next message. This is heated. Uh, this one says, hi sisters, I'm a 22 year old student living with my uncle and his wife. I've noticed a disturbing situation and I need your help. So my uncle is a very busy man and travels a lot. His marriage is fairly young and they have no kids yet, but I know he adores her so much. Now to my issue. During my last vacation, I noticed that my uncle's wife usually entertained this particular female friend. Sometimes I noticed them stealing glances at each other and also being a little too touchy for my liking. Mm. They also call each other uh, by endearing names such as babe, honey. I really didn't think much of it until one fateful day. Her friend came around as usual and made herself at home. I had some grocery shopping to do, so I excused myself and left the house. 15 minutes after leaving the house, I realized that I had picked the wrong purse, so I had to return home. To my utter surprise, I heard moans, loud moans from her room, and I was wondering what was going on. My curiosity led me to her door, which was slightly ajar. Oh my God, they were having sex. My in-law is a lesbian? I couldn't believe my eyes. I ran to my room immediately, picked the purse, and dashed out. I've not been able to look her in the eye ever since, knowing that my uncle loves her so much. I had so much respect for her, and I'm truly disappointed. How could she even commit this dastardly act on her matrimonial bed? My question now is, do I tell my uncle about what I saw because he doesn't deserve this, or should I mind my own business? Now, when we come back from this commercial break, we will jump right in. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Sister Sister on 97.3 City FM and City TV. And of course, our WhatsApp number is still 054-998-6996. If you're watching us from outside Ghana, and we know there are a lot of you who do, don't forget to prefix it with the country code plus 233. All right, Claudia, I think you've had a moment to think. Um, what are your thoughts on this particular story? Um, should he go ahead and, um, you know, uh, tell dearest uncle, you know, what he saw? Or, you know, should, you know, they just mind their own business? Did you mind her business? And so, first of all, the, the uncle's wife is, is bisexual and not um, lesbian, just lesbian, because it's obviously sleeping with her husband and sleeping with her female partner as well. But the first question she should ask herself is, if she had found her, her uncle sleeping with a man, would she have told um, the wife? So let's just switch positions. If the wife was the relation and she had found the man sleeping with a, 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 the husband sleeping with a man, would she have told her, her auntie in this case? If she wouldn't have done that, then she should keep the information to herself. And I might be biased, but she seems a bit more so she's disgusted but there's an additional layer of disgust because she's a woman because she she, she used the word dastardly like this is out of the world i'm against infidelity because i feel we are now in a, a very modern society where people are practicing all forms of fidelity to make their marriage work people are opening up their marriages people are going poly 
there are options out there. So for me, in this time and age, there is really no excuse for infidelity. When you can have an honest conversation with your partner and decide ways and means to go about your marriage. So I'm against infidelity, but I don't think it's her place to say it. Hmm. Personally, I don't think it's her place to say it because for me, it's, it's their marriage. He might find out at some point in time, but if it were me, I would just mind my business. If I want to intervene, I will speak to her. And in speaking to her, it's making her know, okay, I know what you are doing. I know just so, I, I want you to know that I know. I'm not going to tell my uncle, but do something about it because I know he's a good man and he doesn't deserve it. Maybe the thought of her knowing that you know might make her stop. But telling your uncle, I don't think she should do it. She should mind her business. And this is in no way saying that I'm condoning that she's cheating on, on the husband. That I'm against it because I feel there are now modern ways to be, to, be, to be honest in relationships. So if she decides it to be, if she's decided to be dishonest, that's her problem and it's between her and her husband. But I don't think I would, I would get into this chaos and mess. Seriously, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't advise her to tell him. Okay. All right. Olivia, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whether it's right or it's wrong, it's clearly wrong. She shouldn't be doing that. Um, it's funny how um, in society, people are um, in a hurry to tick the societal boxes. Um, yes, I got married. I, had ki I have kids at this time. Da, 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 da. Um, she's obviously been lesbian for the longest time. She just had to get married so that her mom, who probably doesn't know, or her dad who doesn't know, or his siblings, or as society a out as a cover-up. Mm. So she decided to get married. And then, but she wants to have her, her cake and eat it, or eat her cake and have it in which one of that. But, have her cake and eat it. Yes, have her cake and eat it. <laughs> but having said that, um, for your own conscience and for your own sanity, so that when you sleep, you can sleep and know that nothing is on your head and just because of the love you have for your brother uncle for your uncle what i think you, you need to do is to confront the woman don't hide confront her let her know that you've seen her do this and you don't think she should be doing that and that's i mean like claudia said her her uncle loves her to bits so she shouldn't be doing that to her uncle but if i were you i will I will, you know, confront her and I will tell her that should she do that again the next time, you would have no choice but to tell her uncle. Hmm. That's what I will do. And if she calls your bluff, I would actually go and find cameras and have proof to show to my uncle cool. if she decides not I'd to yeah. stop. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> cameras and tinsel. Mm, well, what I'm are you shocked. saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, I'm, I'm one. I'm one hundred percent with Claudia. Mm. Your question is: Should you tell your uncle or not? I don't think it's your place. I don't think it's your business. In fact, I don't think even think it's your place or business to confront the woman. Obesuja, I'm between you. Do you get where I'm coming mm. from? There are a couple. For you know, your uncle knows. Because cause like Claudia, uh, Claudia just said, these days, Charlie, people are, there's poly, there's open marriages. There's, so what if you go and tell your uncle and he says, eh, me new. Send no affair. Mm. Do you get what I mean? No, you don't tell your uncle. You have no, proof no, no, your uncle. No, no. no what yeah, if that's he what knows. What if he knows? What if he knows? At least there's confirmation. What if he knows? We pay you, uncle. How go no? What if he knows? We pay you, uncle. We pay you, uncle. We pay you, uncle. We pay you, uncle. Do you get where I'm coming from? Look, they are a couple. Yes, you may have an opinion on her sexual preferences. I'm absolutely against infidelity because I mm -hmm. think that if somebody loves you, there are conversations that need to be had. And like she rightly said, she's not lesbian, she's bi. Let's not assume that she's lesbian. Lesbians will not have sex with a man. So if she's married to your uncle, it's very likely that she prefers both. Okay. But it could be that she is, but it could be. 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 But my point is, yes, your opinion on what she is doing with her friend is your opinion. Okay? Let's it's her not husband... an opinion. It's based on evidence. It's based on what actually happened. So no, it's not no, 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 no. But how no, do you feel about what it? she should do? Okay. Yes. What, okay. What, how you feel about it is your business. Okay. She, she obviously thinks it's okay for her to be doing this on her matrimonial bed, which it Ooh. isn't. It's, it's so that one gets off completely. Mm. It's off completely. But my point is, 
we want dear any so yes you could talk groceries and tea she said that uh, they've been touching, touching themselves and been calling each other honey and baby. Is that off? Women do that, no? No. We do. do do what do like what, do we call, what? call each other babe, babe all the time. Like you yeah, 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 we call each other babe but, and hand all the time. But hold, not on, a thing. hold on, hold on, hold okay, on. Go ahead. When man and women are, are doing something, something, they are pretending that they are not doing something, something. You Even can in tell. their office space, you can't tell. You can tell. Mm. Like yes. no matter how the woman tries to hide, yes, you can you tell. Yeah. And Thank this you. was not a common oh me and just oh hi babe, hi babe. Was that because there was You're actually making my point too. The point I'm making is she had her suspicions. It is because oh, Auntie Amma oh, has come to the house. Oh, no, and no, 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 I think no, 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 don't continue doing that to him. But if you do, I will have no choice but to let you, let my uncle know. And if she calls your whatever Blush. bluff now, find some kind of record, 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 Tom. and tell your uncle, 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 people. I love you so much. I don't want to break your heart. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin your marriage. I know that it's not my place, uncle. So before I tell you this, <laughs> uncle, but I then you, you go straight ahead to, to ruin his marriage, yeah, and then you go straight ahead to ruin his marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the people who say, I'm sorry, I'm hurting you, but I'm hurting no, you. No, but the people you love you. the most are the ones you tell tr the truth to. I mean, call a spade a spade. If it was my blood brother, I'm you would tell him. I'll tell him. I'll find evidence and tell him. Mm. Because the guy will be thinking that he's doing his bit in the bedroom. Meanwhile, the woman is not satisfied. Is it fair on him? No. Okay, okay. So, okay so all, all and jokes are much And they, they, they all jokes in front of God and a man, man that's telling, this is the deal. Yeah. Okay. That's not cool. Okay, so all jokes aside, though, I mean, we live in a country where what they're doing is actually illegal. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, on that ground, dear auntie wife, please, if your niece in law decides that she'll film you and she this evidence ends up with the police, you're in trouble, you're in, you're in major trouble. So, that's what that one, dear. Let's not, I mean. Yeah, for me, it's really not your business. But unfortunately, we live in an environment yeah. where this is illegal. So if we're going down that road, it is what it is. Mm. It is illegal. Yeah. You need to either be careful, stop, or be careful. <laughs> or stop completely. Or, or if you careful. know you can't handle go it, accept the marriage. Hey, yeah. Except the marriage. No, it's true. We are because, doing deliverance. No, because, uh, Anna. Because, because you know that the, the, the uncle can actually go to court and the, the marriage yeah, can be a long I know. Based, yes, yes, based on, on, yes, on that. Yes, yeah, so I, agree. It's, it's I, right. I know that. Call mm. a spade a spade. Charlie, like this guy saying, I believe, go for deliverance. <laughs> God will deliver you from that. It's true. Read the Bible. I'm not sure about God that. God will deliver you. I'm not sure about that. God delivers all sorts of things. So trust me, answers prayers. That's the thing. That's that's if, if she's genuinely in the place and position to change. to change. But if she wants to enjoy what's happening, she makes society things that oh, she's legally married, like she's married, yeah. And then she can we're actually use that. She will use the husband to procreate and still be doing things on the on the on the dark on the in side in the, dark, yeah. in the dark. It's not fair on the guy. Well, Mia. So the thing is, what would this niece lose if she told the un uncle? At most. Right, at most, no, the uncle will be upset. Get kicked out of the house. She'll be kicked out of the house, but she will have her conscience and she will have the evidence. That's why I'm saying, so have some, are we the same way? You don't use your mouth to just say it all. Have some kind of evidence and know how you put the information across. Mm. But tell. So when Jaya, tell. Would that know that? Pray for her too. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Let me, let me read a couple of comments. Uh, Tofik says, anything that concerns my mother and siblings is my business. Kwame says, he or she who sees wrong and does nothing about it is just as guilty. First, approach your sister-in-law, talk to her about it, and then encourage her to approach her husband to confess so they both seek help. Ibrahim says, if you have no proof, tell your uncle. No, if you have proof, tell your uncle. If you have no proof, keep quiet. Mm. Lauren says, just mind my, your business, my sister. Pray that your uncle finds out by himself. Ikea says, does she come around when your uncle is in or only when he's not around? Mm. For all you know, your uncle might be aware she's bisexual. 
That's what Drew That's was what saying. I'm saying. Because I actually do know couples like that. Really? Yes. Wow. In this, Ghana. In this Accra, not Ghana. So Ghana is like outside. In this Accra, I actually do know couples who know that their partners are bisexual and they're fine. Then his uncle can tell his niece, oh, I know, don't worry about it. Then she can move on. And, uh, but but at least she said it, right? At least she said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I mean, for, for, for talk. But if All she right. doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> you go. Uh, Frank <laughs> <Friends, laughs> says, uh, once it's a girl-to-girl -girl thing, I see nothing wrong with it. I would have invited her friend over for a threesome if I were your uncle. How so, typical! Wow, wow. wow. Oh, he's wow. taking it to a whole different it's level. It's a whole new level. We are going to threesome. Friends wow. is kinky. All right. Wow, friend. Ibrahim says, I'll find a way of telling him indirectly. And at a time, I have gathered enough proof. Mm -hmm. Blood is thicker than water. Thank you. This is ungodly. I can't feign ignorance of it. And I'm glad that someone mentioned blood is thicker than water because I think Claudia was the one who asked that if she had found her uncle um, doing a similar thing, would she be inclined to tell her his wife? Mm. I don't think so. You never know. This person seems it's, like... It's because this person... Uh, it's because, because it's this is her uncle. Yeah. It's because there's blood. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. why she's she inclined. Feels she to. feels compelled to. Now, at which point are you able to put your objective lenses on do you understand because mm. you see once the bible says a man and a mm. woman become one when they marry mm -hmm. right so if you're his niece you should be seeing them as one okay. so however you'll be treating your uncle mm -hmm. it is fair it is only right that you be treating his wife the same, the same. way mm. because they are one yeah mm -hmm. so she should ask herself if i found my uncle in this position would I be writing this letter to sister, sister? Would I be writing to ask, should I tell his wife or not? Is my obligation simply because we are blood relations? Is that why I feel inclined to tell him? If that is so, then your answer is no, do not. Because it means that you're not seeing them as one. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Right. You're only seeing him as your uncle. Reason why. Which is why wanna... you want to tell. So she should ask herself that question. If I found my blood relative mm. doing this, would I be making a fuss about it? If you wouldn't, then please keep quiet. But you've ha we've had submission on this, has submissions on the show whereby people who are actually not even blood related have still, have still yeah, wanted to tell and whatnot. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for bringing it here because then you have people like me who will actually tell you to go and have a conversation with this woman. Mm -hmm. Tell her that because this bottom is line, what you I've don't seen. want to hurt right. your uncle. uncle. Yes. So tell her if she doesn't do anything about it, she doesn't repent, and she still does it. Okay, then so, you look for the proof. Okay, so and my, you do my issue is not it. coming to the show. My issue. Look, my thing is, question yourself. What is my motive for wanting for, to tell? Yeah, right. Is it because he's my blood relative? Mm. If that is the reason, then that's not a fair yeah. reason. Is it because, in all the honesty, I feel... Or, yes, yeah. is it morality or yeah. all of that? And indeed, if my blood relation was doing the same thing, I would feel this Reacts exact same, same way. way. Mm. Do you understand? Because then, if, if that's your answer, then we know that, okay, you're coming from a place of objectivity, objectivity. morality, and all of that. It's not simply because this one is my blood relative now. Obi, awa, kako, fobi, aba, no, di, we, eh, ye, no. E, na, me, pe, se, me, ka. Na, se, ka, no, no, de, ye, obi, ni, na. Well, Becca, is my question. You. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Everybody okay now? Yeah, I'm okay. Who's that, lady? Who's that? I'm loving it. <laughs> Claudia, you good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll go for a quick commercial break. Don't forget, your comments are always welcome to the show. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, Sister Sister on City TV and 97.3 City FM. Let's hear your thoughts. Please keep them coming through. A message here says, hi, Jess. I'm in a messy situation at the moment, and I don't know what to do about it. I just had sex with a guy who was once my close friend and who also once dated my sister. He says he loves me, and I honestly enjoyed the sex. I think I like him too. Don't know if it's love or lust. Should I cut him off or date him? <coughs> Uh, <laughs> why is everybody looking away? <laughs> Olivia, talk to me. What oh, do you think? Oh dear, oh mm. dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. You just shouldn't be doing somebody who did your sister. Hey. Why? That's just me. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, some way. It'd be some way. Some way. Some way. Your sister now, I'm not worried. Like, in that. But like, ex, oh though, way, way. No, but Chale, some way. Mm. Really, some way. They can some compare way. notes. I, 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 I just don't think. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I'm speechless. Like, 
And the fact that she even goes on about, okay, so hold on. Is it the sex that he's giving you that makes you think you like him? You see, that's why, Charlie, hashtag don't drop them naked. Because mm. they always Preach. mess with your mind. Preach, they do. Sister. Like, you Preach. don't even know that whether you love him for him or, like, he's your, he used to be your good friend, but you're doing him, like, no, 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 no. You shouldn't be doing that, Charlie. You shouldn't be doing that. And I mean, so what if you bump into your sister and your sister probably had a terrible broken heart from him and then like, what are you going to tell your sister? Like, it doesn't justify it. Mm. Day, noon, noon or night. You does shouldn't, it, does you it, shouldn't does be it, doing that. Does it matter to you how they broke up? Does that count? No, it doesn't. Okay. It just, just doesn't the fact matter. that they've the, dated before. I mean, just like my twin sister, Olive, she dated this guy. I mean, we're cool friends. We, I knew the guy. I can't see myself shagging Andrew. No, like really, like no matter how hot or fine he is, like he's my my sister, they did this. My like, Sanko Fadia Samway, plus it's not my existence. So, and I'm like, ah, sorry, sorry, no. Okay, okay, you made I, your point. It hurts me. <laughs> Drea, talk to me. <laughs> hmm, this one there. Mm -hmm. So I hear you on, you shouldn't date your sisters. Actually, it's quite ill, because now I'm looking at all of my sisters, exes <laughs> and partners, and, ah. and ill. Ah. Ah. Exactly. Yeah, ill. But. <laughs> There's a but. But, so if they've broken up and she's moved on, sister has moved on and he's moved on, I think it depends on how the breakup was, what the relationship with the sister is currently, and as to whether you don't know if it's love or lust. Charlie, once you're confused, then you do know that it's not love. Because I think mm -hmm. that when it's love, you know, you, you know. know, you know, when it's love, you do know that it's love. So maybe that's what you need to be questioning. Well, it's not, it's, you shouldn't be questioning whether you should cut him off or not. The question is, because if you do love him, I think it's, it will be a bit unfair for us to say simply because he has dated my sister, the fact that I love him, I should cut him off. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Because a good man, a good man is a good man, whether he's dated your sister or not. Right. Do you get what I'm coming from? If he was so good, why but did your sister? Leave? Exactly. No, 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 no. no, 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 but, no but there are good. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. But there are good people who are not necessarily good matches. It doesn't mm. make them bad people. Okay. You, do you get what I mean? Mm. Like you've dated some very good people, but you're not with them. Right. I've dated good people. The fact that we're not with them anymore just meant that we're not compatible with mm. them. So they may not. He and her sister may not have been compatible. Right. Are we saying that simply because? He has been with her sister before. If one, he's a good man, and we know how rare those are. If he's a good man, and she does love him, these are my caveats. Mm -hmm. One, he's a good man. Two, she does love him, so she needs to be sure that that's what it is. I think it will be extremely unfair for us to say, simply because he has dated my sister, let I me ask you this friend. question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So should she ask her sister or tell her sister how she feels and, you know, just like, I'm falling for your ex? Yes, I, I think so. Mm. I think that's actually a conversation that needs to be had because, again, she's your sister. Right. You guys are stuck with each other for the rest of your life. She will always be your sister. You need to be sure. If, in fact, even with friends. I mean, I don't date my friends. Exactly. But, but if it so happens, it will... It will be a conversation. Charlie, are you okay with me doing so and so with this person? Because I start catch feelings. If she says no, if it's a friend, if she says no, even with a friend, I'll wait and decide that, okay, is my is friendship, my friendship worth, worth me losing a good man that I have legit feelings for? If it's my sister, then yes, indeed, it is worth losing because I'm stuck with this person. This is the person that when a family member dies, we will be planning funerals together. <laughs> like, I need to... I feel you. Exactly, you know. But I feel like simply because he has dated her sister is not enough reason for us to say he's a no-go. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> let, me, let, me get, let me get Claudia to, to weigh in on this as well. What do you think? I mean, it's split on the table here. Yeah, I think uh, um, the sisters have said it all, but for me, it's, it's more of a conversation between two sisters and not even the man at this point. For me, I love my sister. And this is, I think this will be the only time I will be willing to put my sister's happiness ahead of mine. I want to have a conversation with her and see how she feels about it. Not even about how their relationship went, because I feel two people are different in two different scenarios. He might even be a terrible man to her, but he might be an angel to me, depending mm -hmm. on how we get on and the chemistry. So it's not even about what they did when they were together. How does she feel about me being with her ex? 
and that would be the deciding factor for me because mm. I love my sister basically that's okay it. all right quick question yes. So before, when this guy was dating the older sister, I'll just do older sister, younger sister, mm. right? He went to the house, mm -hmm. assuming, mm -hmm. right? Mommy knows him, assuming. Brother, sister, okay, even mommy and daddy don't know him. Brother and sister, no. clearly, sister knows him, mm -hmm. right? And then you're broken up with sister, big sister. Now you're doing small sister. So, I mean, this girl that you happen to be in a relationship with, with your sister's boyfriend, mm. Moving on, like, even if your sister claimed to be okay with it, right? I'm looking at the bigger picture. I always like to look at the bigger picture. So this guy comes around and says, okay, you're the one. I want to get married to you. And uh, would he forever be known as the uncle who, you know, like... This, he will be known as my husband. Like, mama is always like, mama. No, he will be known as my like, husband. He will be known as your husband. Yes, so he wants he's to make us no, 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 entertaining that person, like, you come to the same family twice. That's why I it think that matter. this girl had no business. This, this is why I think, mm -hmm. that's why sex always complicates things, however we want to look at it. It always does. And the fact that it didn't, I, 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 the fact that it, it didn't work out with big sister or whatever. We are assuming that they had sex, though. We don't know that for sure. Oh, she did say. She did say. She did say. She did say. Yeah, the sex, the is, sex good. is good. No, no, no. I'm talking about with between her sister, him and her sister. With her sister. And, and her But they were pretty close. And by, by now, like, your sisters are very close, Charlie, the way the guy did me. Charlie, Charlie. Mm. It could happen. Okay. It could happen. Okay. Okay. No, it could happen. You never know. Like, you never know one's mind or intentions. My thing is that you've, 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 had intimacy with one person in the family. Now you're going, you're having intimacy yeah. again. Like, at which point in time are we going to have some scruples here? To like, be honest, what, like, to be honest, before you come in, Drea, um, huh. I, for me, mm -hmm. if a sister or a friend has touched him, forget it. Yeah. For me, personally. Thank you. But, okay, but I think that everybody, that like you said, mm. for you. Yes, for me, for me. For yeah. you, okay. Now, her question is not even, like, like Claudia said. Yes, like Claudia mm -hmm. said. The conversation should be between the two sisters. I honestly yes. don't think so. You, everybody has their their, their moral code that they live by. Live by. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some are guided by the Bible. Some are guided by experience. Some, like we all have our moral codes. I feel like I've said the fact that my sister has is my sister okay with it. That's one. Is he good for me? That's two. Mm. If those answers are good. We're good. Okay. And your question about will he forever be known as uncle so so and so? What do I care? Does he make me happy? Am I in love with him? Am I in a happy marital home? What do I care what he's known as uncle so so and so? Be there and be calling him uncle so so and so. Eh? Thankfully, she doesn't know. Well, that, what, that's why from the get go. That's why from the get go. I said before she started shagging him. Oh, oh well. but, that, but she should have had that conversation uh, when she knew well, the feelings she were coming that, in. And she was said, getting are you in love? Then yes, to him. Okay, let's move Thank on to our you. next story. Yes, let's. hi sisters. There's something <laughs> I have realized about my dating life. Mm -hmm. Anytime I'm single and I feel like I'm ready to date, mm -hmm. I end up falling for the ones that I know very well are not good for me. I just want to know if there are hey. other women like me, yes. or do I need help? <laughs> Can I go first? Please go first. My answers are very short. <laughs> yes, there are other women like you. And yes, you need help. Uh, Why does she need help? Maybe she's just unlucky with love. No, 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 no. She I said with that yeah. she goes mm. for the ones she, she knows, knows yeah. are bad for her. Yeah. She likes the bad boy yeah. type. Well, you enemy will be power, my sister. Yeah, yeah, help. What's it? Yeah, yeah, deliverance. You know, deliver. like the good deliver. boys, eh, the good boys who come and chase you, and you know that they are good boys. Like, no. mm, he's boring. Oh, his teeth is on me. Oh, he chews some me. <laughs> then you see that one devil. You are bad demon. You are bad demon. Yeah, bad demon. demon. <laughs> then your heart says, hey, yeah, it is this, one. this demon I like. My darling, <laughs> your question is, are you alone? No, you are not alone. Do you need help? Yes. Yes, you need help. Do you know why? Oh. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because you're self-sabotaging. You do not think that you're worthy of the good men. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. If you see a therapist, a therapist will tell you that, look, you're not loving yourself enough and recognizing that you're deserving of the good men. And so you're attracting 
what you think that you deserve and that's what you're going for. So yes, you do need help, what's it? Mr. Oyari and Nanya won't consist that means Claudia. What do you think? I'm, I'm more I'm more curious about why she says they are bad. Why are they bad? Is oh. it because they don't want marriage or they just want to have fun? Because most of us are in this box that every relationship to lead to mar should lead to marriage and every good relationship or every good boy is one that leads to marriage so for me um i'm wondering is she saying it's bad because these men are not marriage materials mm. because personally in my opinion not every relationship can lead to marriage but every relationship can be happy so she needs to evaluate what she wants and why she thinks these boys are bad and see if really they are bad or she's just saying they are bad against the societal norms of every relationship should end in marriage okay. for me i get into a relationship because it's going to make me happy i'm more short term than long term so i really don't understand her bad good um dynamics and measurements so i can't really answer properly but if right. it's oh because it's not going to end in marriage they are bad then she needs to evaluate her standards a bit all right, um, we're almost out of time. Oh, Olivia, I'll no. give you 30 seconds. But you know, qu qu quickly to talk about what she was saying. You know, you only know when somebody is bad for you when they don't treat you right. Mm. Half the time. It's not because you're looking for the, the, the relationship to end in marriage. You just know that they don't treat you right and deservingly, just the way mm -hmm. Drea said. And Drea just hit it right on, on, the, on, the, on the head. So, Chale, um, definitely you need help. And um, that's, that's the thing. How do you put yourself out there, though? Mm. You know, like you said, mentally, psychologically, what, what are you looking for? How do you put yourself? What if you put value on yourself and you know who you are? And it takes a lot of time. Don't be in a hurry to get into any relationship right now. It's okay to be single. It's okay to be okay. Just chill, breathe. Smell the roses, the coffee, the wachi. Chill. Reflect a lot more. You know, do some deep insight thinking, like thoughtful stuff. You know, find out what you can do to add value to yourself, what you want for yourself. What You know, you can only, when you're in a better place and you're, you're in a place of peace and you're in a place whereby, like I always say, like you pray on it, you're trying to see God more, you're trying to do stuff to help other people. Charlie, you find yourself in a good place and every time you're not looking, that's when people, good people present themselves and you might want to start off by doing things like that. Right. Positive things, little tiny steps. Don't rush to get to any, any relationship. Take it one day at a time and pray on it. Like Charlie, me, I pray for the spirit of discernment because Charlie, there are guys who are out there who just want to take them knickers off. They can come sheep in wolf skin mm. to say all sorts of things. But once you don't know a man's mind, you know, so I always pray to God for the spirit of discernment to bring the right people my way. And even when he brings people my way, he should tell me through the spirit of discernment that, ah, this, this guy, is, there's something mm, about him. Mm. And once you pray on it, God will direct your path and you'll make the right choices. But Tali, one day at a time. That's what's up. Also, for Mami has spoken. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> we shall end the show. It's been great. It's been, it's been hot. Oh. Oh, yeah, ladies, y'all yeah. got hate today. Good. Yes. Uh, special shout out to um, our sponsors who make it possible every single week. Truly appreciate you. Vodafone, together we can. Talia Rice, if you guys haven't tried it yet, please go ahead and check it out. Talia Rice, always coming home to love. Onga, you already know, don't let me talk. Mama's helping hand. Um, <laughs> Kel White's, it's a really good toothpaste. Happy Smiles is what it gives you. And uh, Geisha, Geisha, African Strength. My name is Jessica. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back same time next week.